Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Attention car shoppers, right now at South Carolina Federal Credit Union, you can get a new or used auto loan and pay nothing until 2024, and no payments for 90 days means nothing out of pocket going into the new year. Plus, we have flexible rates and terms, so you can make the best financial choice for you. Learn more at scfederal.org slash autoloans. That's scfederal.org slash autoloans. Certain restrictions apply. Existing South Carolina Federal Credit loans are excluded. If you're ever in a dark situation, we'll be there, no hesitation. Brotherhood's our rule, we cannot bend. Hey, I started. I pushed the button. You did. That it means worked. we're official. It, we are official. <laughs> well, well, we're officially something. <laughs> hey, this is We Should Be Better at This. My name is Chris Donovan. And I'm Eric Leckie. Uh, you can find me at Sinatra's Rat Pack on Twitter. And I'm at Chris underscore Donovan on that same site. You can also go to We Should Be Better at This dot com if that's not where you are right now. And you can listen to all of our past catalog. Do you remember, like, it wasn't that long ago that MySpace was a thing? It really is that not was, that long ago. I mean, that was my, in my mind the first dating site that worked. Right. It was like Tinder before Tinder was there, Tinder. It really was. <laughs> but it's funny that like it seems so old and antiquated, but it really wasn't that long ago in the time frame of like no. worldly events. Like, yeah, technology flew has been flying for the last fifteen years. Yeah. I mean, so uh, what do you think is next a- after Twitter? Is it so right now? You're Chris underscore Donovan at Twitter. I think uh, what like five years from now you're going to be like Chris exclamation sign at like hoops net or something like whatever <laughs> whatever it's going to be it's going to be there's just going to be some more made up words because yeah. we're running all out of words all the real yeah. words are gone like yahoo and google were the two big ones that came first <laughs> you know what I was thinking Twitter. about this week is I wish I would have been smart enough back in the, er, the, in the mid-90s when the internet kind of started becoming a thing I, I thought about it but I never followed through I wanted to buy up domain names yeah right and I read the People story of the guy who uh, bought pizza.com and sex.com. Wow. No, porn.com. Porn.com and pizza.com. The best two things that begin with the letter P. <laughs> so he bought them, and I guess he Less sat on them for wife. a year. Right? Oh. <laughs> he, 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 uh, he had to keep the upkeep every year. Okay. And then finally, Pizza Hut came by and bought pizza.com for him for like one and a half million dollars. And Jeez. then, like, some porn site bought porn.com. But the point is, I think. Probably for a, a lot more than one and a half million dollars. Like, <laughs> Pizza's his, good and all, but. Hmm. And they're not even buying it for that to be the main site. Pizza no. Hut's buying it so that when you type Pizza in pizza.com, yep. it, it, it d- redirects you. Yep. But imagine that you, you're, what, over the course of 10 years of owning it or five years of owning it, you paid, what, $500 worth of yeah, like fees maybe. and stuff like that? So Back then, when like it first the, came out, maybe like eight bucks a month or something. So imagine, like in 1994, you just go out and buy Disney.com or something like that, and you just own that website. And when Disney comes and says, "We'll offer you a million dollars plus lifetime passes for for you and the family," like, okay, done. You could make a business of just doing that. I, it was it was a business for a lot of people, and I didn't realize it until after. <coughs> excuse me, I didn't realize it until after. Oh my god, <coughs> that's two coughs. Uh, <coughs> someone's got to stop smoking. Oh my god, what was that? What was that timestamp? I wanna delete that shit. Two, three. So um a lot of people did that and uh and I didn't realize it until I started like looking for like m- my email that mattered instead of like like you were talking about earlier. Blue unicorn seventy four dot J. Yeah. You know, it, but now everybody has those. They're like, Oh, I'll give you my email and I I even hired or how to hire people but have people that have come and interviewed for jobs for me that have like these weird names. And then I start looking for like real names because obviously we have to be business professionals one time yeah. in our life. Nope, all the ga- really all the names really are gone, and I don't have a very convenient last name. And it's also like you're always going to be like uh, uh, Eric Lecky one two nine seventy two at gmail dot com. Like it's never going to be. <laughs> or if you're an idiot, you're like four twenty Eric Lecky sixty nine. Yeah, and then it's like uh, th- put this on my job application. Maybe that's why I'm not getting any right. Jobs. It's wow. still your, that's still your Jesus. email address. I shouldn't be Eric. Dot lecky at porn.com that shouldn't be my email address <laughs> that's anymore. a website dude. i really shouldn't do. well but that's where i get most of my mail to that... 
<laughs> it's just it's just a newsletter. It's true. <laughs> By the way, we never talked about your opening song. You didn't I? Did not. I was waiting uh, for you to mention uh, it. Uh, that was "Bro Him" by Pennywise. The the uh, 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 what is it? It's just where they're drunk and they're singing uh, about their dead friends. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know. I actually one time was in a pit where they were singing that song, and I gotta say that's one of those songs that when that comes on and you're like in the pit. It's a really energizing, like, pit-worthy song. Yes, it is. It's one of those, uh, uh, Limp Bizkit's got a few of those songs, Korn's got a few of those like, songs. Even if you don't like the band or the song, when you're there, the energy is just, like, the right energy. Right. And right? it's the, loud enough, and the, the first guitar riff just hits, and you're like, yeah, why can I not find a pen that works? Because, <laughs> uh, I don't know, you're unprepared and you're not professional. Uh, we're, Anyways, not, we're not, we're definitely, <laughs> we're definitely should, should be better, better at this. <laughs> uh, I went to uh, Comic-Con with the family this weekend. The fake Comic Con. Oh, it was definitely fake, and I did not know that when I bought the tickets. <laughs> Where'd you go, LA Comic Con? <laughs> Long Beach Comic Con. Oh yeah, it was fake. Uh, but and they I had also some... I learned an interesting bit of trivia. Okay. Did you know there's a difference between a Comic Con and a Comic Expo? Because uh, I went to a Comic Expo. expo. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a that's just a fancy name for it. A wasn't a good baseball beat. team, and it's not a good thing to go do. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, no, an expo is literally just like here's a gigantic hall filled with exhibitors. It's a it's a swap meet. It's, it's a, a fancy swap name for a swap meet. All, it's a, exactly it's a it's a swap meet that has all one particular type of thing because it was all comic book related. Yeah, but a, it, a comic con with, is without, like actual events and things going on. Yeah, and, because you know, they have panels. Yeah, yeah, they have panels. Yeah, you've been stuff. to Comic Con, right? I've, yeah, I've never been to the actual con, but I've been outside and they have that's where they do a lot of exhibits for like Netflix and uh, Hulu and uh, Game of Thrones and HBO and stuff. And now so. that's like the place <clears> to be, right? Like, I mean, yeah, you have a million so and a half. Great. People setting up their podcast out there. You have yep. every television network trying to get in there. You have big studios trying to launch their big movies. You have in celebrities there. everywhere because there's the signings, meet and greets, and the signings and everything. I'm it's surprised really, you never. Really cool. I'm surprised you never did the whole thing. I have two. I have uh, three tickets to go, or actually two tickets to go this year. So I have wow. to work it out with the family because you have to you have to like register and then put your name and then wait in the waiting room when they have the whole four hour yeah. session. It's a it's a big bunch of rigmarole. If you tell me, is there any big? But, oh, so we got to think about the timing of this. When is the Comic July. Con? July. Mm-hmm. What big movie announcement could they be making at that July one where you're going to see some exclusive preview of the next Star Wars movie or the next, or what uh, Disneyland, uh, Star Wars land is going to look like? I mean, all that kind of stuff well, they reveal there. Well, yes, they do. They do, but I, but a lot of those Disney ones are going to, straight to D23 in Anaheim. Which we have tickets to also. Oh. <laughs> you son of a but, bitch. But, but you got to realize this is going to be two months after the Avengers Endgame plays. So they're probably going to oh. bring on the new trailer for whatever teaser they do at the end of it, which could be the next version of Iron Man. Are they doing another Doctor right. Strange? Like, the, just whatever movie that is. My phone's beeping. Nice. Yeah, and there's also, <clears throat> yeah, they have that timeline out of what movies they're going to release. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can kind of look ahead and see. But it'd be interesting to see, like, what... So that's J- July of 2019. you got to look at what's going to come out in, like, the spring or summer of 2020. And that would be the big like sneak the big peek teaser. that they're going to give you. So that'd or, be interesting big, to kind of yeah. see. Uh, I mean, I mean, Star Wars. This one's going to be the big one because it's Episode Nine this year. Yeah. So that's going to be. They're probably going to release a long Star clip. Wars. Almost legal. I think it's going to be the <laughs> halfway to legal. legal. Nine. <laughs> well, almost fifty percent. Once you get to fifty-one percent, you're almost legal. Or they're just always wrong. Okay. Nine. <laughs> nine. Nine. Oh uh, yeah, but two white guys on a patio and Whittier yelling nine. Yeah. Probably should stop this. Yeah, probably should. Stop. <laughs> uh, All but, right. What else we got on? But the uh, one, one thing I do want to say about the Comic Con, yeah. uh, I found a ton. Of outfits that I would really like my wife to wear. Yeah, was it at porn.com? No, it was <laughs> No, pizza.com. Pizza. Um, yeah, that no. I'd believe more. <laughs> that would be more. No, the, some of those uh, uh, cosplay oh, yeah. costumes are quite phenomenal. Dude, it's awesome. And I'm like, I, I kept looking over to her saying, honey, I'm, I'm a devoted love. I, I love my wife and everything. But there were some hard times not, not looking, right. like not getting oh, yeah. caught looking. We were like, you're wearing what? <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll just nudge my wife and be like, She'll be what I go over there blue, and she'll be like, "Oh, jeez," <laughs> and I'll be like, "Yep." <laughs> See, that's a good little tip for a young married men out here, out there. Uh, if you point it out and you're obvious with it, you can actually get away with looking. It's the when you sneak a look yeah. that you get in big trouble. When you're taking a picture of some tree over there, and there's a girl <laughs> with like booty shorts right in front of the tree. <laughs> yeah, there's some amazing ones. My favorite costume of the day was there was this woman. I know you're gonna make fun of me because I'm obsessed with Bob Ross, but this woman who was actually dressed like Bob Ross. Oh my but God. it was funny because she had That's a bunch of facial hair taped to her, uh, glued weird, to her face. Demented <laughs> it was very funny. Fantasy of yours. And then uh, my youngest daughter who dressed up as <laughs> Louise. Belcher from uh, Bob's Burgers. Yes. She got pretty excited when uh, along the way about like six or seven people said hi Louise and, and it was really kind of cool. 
and I think that that would kind of want uh, uh, I want to get them to want to do more cosplay if we go to another one of those types of things I think that's what my daughter wants to go this year to Comic Con mm-hmm. with the pink bunny ears right yeah, yeah it's yeah. an easy costume she wants to get she goes I need bunny ears and I'm like I'll get them for you calm down so, but but I think if, if you did that, the Long Beach Comic Con, you saw all those costumes. Yeah. The regular Comic Con, the real one in San Diego, the one that's the biggest everywhere. The costumes are phenomenal. Oh, people put because people plan like the entire year oh, for yeah. what their costumes. And they hand be. make them. I mean, it's crazy. which that gets me. I saw some here, and they, it's not that they were that good, but I looked at the time commitment that it took yeah. to make these. I mean, there's some. There were some Transformers ones where they were hand like these were not store bought costumes. Someone made these, and I'm mm-hmm. thinking to myself, it doesn't look very good. Like you did a pretty yeah. much crap job, but the amount of time that you must have spent making it in the first place blows right. my mind. Wasn't like, a rubber band in a stable? No, it really, <laughs> like, I look at it. I, th- I think I think in terms of like how long it would have taken me for to, to give up, and I think <laughs> you're like, like, eh, like eh, somewhere around the long of the legs. I would have said, eh, screw this. I'm, I'm going as transformer legs. <laughs> Yeah, the box. There's cardboard box. Just cardboard box. One side's painted. <laughs> it's not even painted all the way. It's just halfway up. It just says F this since and I'm done. A, since Eric was here. Uh, the other thing that we, my oh, wife shit. and I started talking about is uh, uh, how much women um, are into these true crime stuff. This, uh, oh, uh, this stuff. And it got me thinking because I watched the Ted B- uh, Bundy flick uh, oh, on Netflix. Have you seen that I one? I have not yet. It's. I mean, it's not anything you need to see, but it's. It's just interesting because they kind of re go over that whole trial and what went, what went on. And if you don't remember, there's some crazy. I didn't know he actually escaped from jail. Oh wait, you times. know, I did see that. Yeah. Because he. Yeah. Because I didn't know that either, and he was out there just doing whatever he wanted to do. Yeah. The and farthest like place it. away. Yeah. yeah. He went from Seattle to Florida. <laughs> like he's literally. Like, That's the farthest place away. Yes. I'm Which kind of. I almost am impressed. He's like, <laughs> well, duh. I'm gonna go the <laughs> I, absolute farthest I can right? go. Right. Uh, but what so what kind of struck me is you're watching the documentary and towards the end in the court cases the, the the courtroom started being filled up with women women who wanted to get in yes you know and this is in the early '80s and then I think about these true crime podcasts are mostly followed by women so why do you think it is that women are so kind of uh, obsessed with this true crime serial killer type thing do you have any uh, thoughts on that or any theories um, because they all want to murder us. Uh-huh. And they're planning? It's all <laughs> They've planning. been planning their entire life, all of them, every single day. Really? I think so. I think women want to kill us. Well, well, my wife is evidence of that. She's slowly trying to kill me. She's doing a bad job, though, because I'm still <laughs> here. <laughs> I've seen you walk around. Yeah, exactly. I haven't been pretty good. Soon but, she's going to push you out this door that has no ramp. See, I think, it's, <laughs> I, I think it's related to what you said, but a little different. My thought on this is every woman, I think, in the back of her mind secretly thinks that this is going to happen to her. Like a murder or something? Yeah, like someone's going to come in the house and, and, and beat me and kill me when I'm sleeping. And so she's going to watch the That's podcast and the thing. It's a little bit where, where she's going to watch about it almost like in preparation. Like how I watch uh, Survivor Man prepper shows. I'm never going right. to be lost in the <laughs> wild. But damn, I kind of want to know how to make a fire out of right. like twigs I, and a matchbook. Or I can use a rock and a stone or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you, you maybe have a point there. The the I think the point might be the fact that they – they they want a, a feeling of be obsessed over. They want they want people somebody to obsess over them because it's usually someone who it's not a spur of the moment passion thing. It's not usually, usually a uh, I've been watching, I've been them, following this woman watching you know, through her window. Saw her like like so then it all kind of clicks to like well he's been watching me all this time and now it's like oh you know like they don't want it but it's that it's got to be weird like a weird. Because it's the same woman that proposes it, to uh, men who are on death row. Yes. Those women are crazy. Those women are crazy. Listen, they have never seen them. They're no. never allowed to touch them. People always trying to have your baby. Ted Bundy, that was a thing in the documentary. Ted Bundy impregnated a woman while in on death row. How? He was allowed to have a con- – they turned their back long enough so they could have a quickie conjugal visit. And he, <laughs> he knocked her up, and she had a baby. He, he was a father while on death row. Uh, see, there would have been my he space He still around. got more action than I did. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been able to post about that. My goodness. But that, Wouldn't yeah, have that, been a surprise nine months later. <laughs> so do you think it's uh, uh, you think it's gonna because um, this seems like it's been throughout history. Think of like uh, the, the women that were interested in like Charles Manson and the women oh, that were yeah. interested in Tim. the, the obsessive. This those is those not like killers. a reason a reason a recent thing. No, this no, is, not at all, not at all. This is something that's been around for ages, and ages. Yeah. And I think it's the obsession thing. Like I, I want to be watched, but I don't want to be watched. I want to be. I want to be obsessed over, but I don't want to be obsessed over. But I want to be worshipped, but I don't want to be worshipped. Yeah. You know, so it's like. 
I think that they, they get a taste of it, they like it, but if it goes to that point, then they're, eh, so Yeah, then I can't give it. Like, yeah. All right, well, let's, let's go on to uh, more happy things. Let's uh, take a trip to the movies here. Oh, oh, hooray for Hollywood. It's really got me. Hooray. 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 Hooray for Hollywood. All right, today we're going to play what are we a doing? episode of our Rotten Tomatoes Okay. Game. All right. Um, you know how this works. We uh, pick a two. No, can you explain, please? Okay. Um, well, anyways, you pick two movies. Uh, we pick two movies each, and it has a theme, and we're going to pick what the critics pick on Rotten Tomatoes and see how close we can get. <laughs> I thought you were just asking me what movies we wanted to watch Saturday night. No, I know you're okay. going to be telling <laughs> Well, this, this, this week's theme is rom-coms that your wife drags you to go see. Okay. Okay? Yep. All right. All right. So that was the thought. So I, I want you to go first. Wow. What do you got first? Uh, do you want me to read mine, right? Yes. All right. So my first pick was, this is the one that my wife drugged me to that you oh, got to pick, man. right? Yeah. So I got to pick the score. You got to pick the score. I think I'm doing that right, or am I doing this backwards? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Notebook. The Notebook. Oh, my God. Is This is like every wife's wet dream. It Ryan is. Gosling in the rain telling you how wonderful you are. But the best kissy line kissies. of the entire movie is the exact question that every man wants to know. Where they're in the rain, and she's like in front of him, and he's got his hands on her shoulder, and he's like, What do you want? <laughs> And she can't answer she can't it. Answer. So we win, I think, overall on the movie. On you know, if it's a men versus women type thing, but over, it's a good, it's a good movie. I'm not gonna lie. The Notebook yeah, was you a did good like movie. it. See, yeah. I never made it through the whole thing. Um, it definitely looks like it was a good story. <laughs> I never quite made it through the whole thing. There's definitely a time where you take out your phone and start going on Twitter while the wife's watching the Notebook. Yeah, <laughs> you know? but in the theater is really rude. <laughs> oh yeah. Because you were married when it came out, right? Yeah, I was. Yeah. But uh, I, I luckily, uh, she tried to do it when it came out on like DVD or something like that. The, yeah. So we own it, It's on actually. Blu-ray now. Yeah, it's on Blu-ray. And now it's on... 3D. Oh, my goodness. we got to buy each one. Look, we're going to feel like it's raining in They're here. They're re-releasing it in theaters. You're coming with <laughs> Oh, my me. God. It's in that 4DX. It's going to be so great. We're going to be in the car with them. <laughs> now, uh, Rachel it. McAdams looked yes. uh, pretty nice uh-huh. in that movie. I will say that. I was going to say I'm sure all the ladies thought Ryan Gosling was Rachel McAdams and I had a night. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I don't remember what year it is because I didn't write down what year it is. But what would you say? Two thousand. Again, like we should be better at this. Something like this. Uh, yeah, I'd say yeah, twenty oh three. Okay, something like that. All right. Early 2000s. I'm going to say, though, that this was a cheesy, sappy, romantic one. But I think critics kind of like that kind of thing. I'm going to say an eighty. Okay, Eric says eighty. And All right. while you tell about your first one, I'll look up the actual score of this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> All righty. So next up um, for me, Chris, is a movie, once again, I didn't write down the year. We really should be better at this. Uh, this one stars uh, current Oscar nominee Bradley Cooper. I don't I, – I, really? This movie – yeah, uh, wife wife drug me to go see this. I, it was somewhat enjoyable. Robert De Niro was pretty charming in it. This movie is called Silver Linings Playbook. It came out in 2012. Uh, it's actually uh, what well, oh, he goes crazy. Already? <laughs> well, not not on tomatoes. IMDb. But uh, after a stint in a mental institution, former teacher Pat uh, Salido moves back in with his parents and tries to reconcile with his wife. And he takes up dancing, which every girl likes. Yeah. It's like watching a Dancing with the Stars episode. But but isn't he introduced after being in a psych ward and stuff? And, yes. Okay, so doesn't matter what he does. No. He's not like, having... Once you're in a psych ward, I mean, I really hate to say it. Like, I don't want the stigma to be attached to people for always, but it's kind of attached to you. Yeah, you're pretty, much, you're pretty much the guy I met from the psych ward. Uh, now, another one with a pretty hot actress in this, which this is, I think, how they get those rom-coms in there. Uh, get the guys into the rom-coms because usually the woman is very attractive this is jennifer lawrence and i think really like height peak jennifer lawrence yeah yeah no i agree but she's also everywhere too i didn't really like this movie you didn't i didn't i, didn't, I don't think i thought I, it was okay i i thought it was okay but it, i i just thought it, it was on the heels of so many other things that she'd been in that it wasn't great like okay. that was Hunger Games and all that shit was still coming out and she was in the X-Men movies and stuff and I'm Look, like she was hot oh, she was at that period it? of time where she was making like eight movies a year yeah like she was in everything she was great but she was doing all those other things that, in, that excited me more about her than some psycho trying to gamble against the Philadelphia Eagles or whatever the hell they were doing in their garbage sacks running down the street I don't understand crazy people that much yeah except for it was funny that the, the dad uh, seemed just as crazy as the son in that one of he course was like, yeah. that's why, why do you think the kid's already crazy so I'm gonna say this probably got this is we're going for the okay the critics uh, critics on this one probably gave it a high score because of those two power hitting uh, Hollywood stars and I think they were nominated for some awards so I'm gonna say this one's probably sitting around an eighty 
84 is what I'm going to write down. An 84? 84. Wow, you went pretty high on that. All right, what's their next one that you got? All right, the next one I picked is probably, and I can't say that I don't like this movie. I love this movie, uh, and, and mainly because my wife loves it so much. And I will tell you that it was on repeat because we own the wow, DVD. Really? In the hospital room. Well, you actually picked her the as, day your, before. Uh, as your list girl last week. And which one did I pick again? You picked Drew Barrymore. I did, last week. Last week you Whoa, picked Drew that's Barrymore. That's right, I did, I did. I think I was thinking, yeah, no, I did. You're, <laughs> you can't be thinking about your neighbor, adding your neighbor to the list, Chris. It doesn't work. I'm like, her name's Drew, um, which is weird because it's a dude. That's um, so, <laughs> so, but no, uh, this was in the, when, before my daughter Cassandra was born, this was on repeat. We probably watched it like four or five times because my wife really loves this movie. So, uh, it's 50 First Dates. It's now, I have to say, this, was, this movie was enjoyable. Drew I definitely Barrymore. enjoyed it. Uh, definitely a rom com. But do yes. you think it qualifies officially because when they throw Adam Sandler in it, you're going to still get some guys to come? So it, is it still counting as a rom com? Or is it an Adam Sandler movie that's more romantic than the others? <laughs> well, both, but it's still a rom com, I would say, because it's, I mean, besides the fact that it's like a horrible feeling to wake up every day, especially if you have kids, which means you were doing shit you don't remember every night, which mm-hmm. means. I kind of almost feel like you got raped every morning. Right, and I think I pointed out in a previous episode where it really feels like this is a movie about rape. I know. Like, it really does. Okay, like, so the anyway, more I think about I it. I like the movie. Stop tearing it apart. Or, what Leave about, wait, wait, I got alone. another one for her. What if she's with her daughter, right, because right. they had a kid, and she, uh, 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 Drew Barrymore takes a nap. She could wake up after that nap, and if no one left her a tape explaining what's going on, she doesn't know she has a child. <laughs> well. She can't fall asleep. And not, to make things worse, let's get on a boat in the middle of the Antarctic. <laughs> <laughs> let's go play in the snow. Yeah, whatever you do, don't yeah. like go off the side of the. Hopefully, you remember how to swim when we're, you wake up. We're all trying to get the same brain damage she got. Let's go do it out on the ocean. <laughs> we want to be the same. So I think this okay, movie so had to get maybe I ruined uh, this <laughs> a, a decent score, but probably not too good. They never tend to get Adam Sandler much credit in his no. movies. They too, but I don't think it was a bad probably. score because this one was more of a rom com. I'm going to say it did fairly well, but not great. I'm going to say a 65. 65. That's a 6 and a 5, That's right? a 6 and a 5. In that order? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure I went to the McDonald's School of Math. All right. <laughs> the next one I got for you is a classic. Uh, I was definitely, uh, I think when I went on dates in like high school and stuff like that, I was drugged to this movie. But uh, the movie is with Whitney Houston and Kevin Costner. The movie is called The Bodyguard. I think it's 1994, I'm going to say. Yeah, 94 sounds about right. That's before Crack Whitney. Yeah. Before Crack Whitney. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is the Whitney where she has the absolutely amazing voice. Amazing. She sings the song that was actually sung by Dolly Parton. But she sings the song. She becomes known for that song. Yep. And oddly enough, this is the number one selling um, movie soundtrack of all time. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, I did not know that. I would have probably thought it would have been Titanic. But I guess they got ten years on them. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but I mean, same same vein of song it's the you know it's the same it's right. same it, it literally could be written yeah. by the same person <laughs> <All right. laughs> so but i did not know that okay so okay uh so we have the bodyguard with lucky landslots you can get lucky just about anywhere dearly beloved we are gathered here today to has anyone seen the bride and groom sorry sorry we're here we were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time <gasps> no lucky land casino with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry in that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Right. Kevin Costner in his prime. In his prime. In his prime. Pumping out good movies. Yeah, w- both of them. You got both of them out that year, and I the, think. So- the song was pretty amazing. But as I remember, and it's been a while since I've seen this movie, I don't know if the movie was very good. I think literally what everyone remembers is the songs. Yeah, and the fact that they had a love, uh, they had a love story where mm-hmm. he was the bodyguard and stuff. So a little bit uh, of a risky <clears> thing because it was still like mid '90s, where it was like black black woman, white guy. Like that was still kind of considered which is risque. Probably considered in the score. Ooh, but yeah, I'm going to put this right. a little bit lower than that because back when this movie came out, people weren't assholes like they are now no. on the internet. So I'm going to say the more like 70. <laughs> 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 right, 70. Yeah, because Al Gore didn't create it yet. Yeah. Is that who did it? <laughs> That's right. Se- <laughs> 74 is what I'm going to give it. 74. We're uh, making references to old, old shit. Re- even older stuff. Yeah. Our downloads are going to go up from... 
right. two. So <laughs> let's pull it up. So as a little right. reminder, wh- uh, what did I say on my two movies and what did you say on your two movies? Okay, so on... And I'll tell you the scores here at the end. On my two movies, I, uh, da, 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 I picked 84 for Silver Linings Playbook and I picked 74 for The Bodyguard. Okay, so let's give you your score here for Silver Linings Playbook mm-hmm. on Rotten Tomatoes is actually a 92. And this is, is this the audience one? Or no, this is the critics. Critics score. one. So the one on the right. Uh, the one on the left. With the green dot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wow, 92. really? Yes, yeah, so they, people liked it. And then for the bodyguard, you said what? I said 74. It is 34. Apparently people did not like this movie. Or, excuse me, critics didn't. I want to make sure I wrote down the right numbers, because if that's the case... Okay, now for me... So this one, that one. Yes. Oh, God, 45. then we got... Woohoo! Okay, so then... Oh, Wow. Is that the one for me? <laughs> that was one okay, for you. On, See, that, I felt bad for a moment. Cool. Okay. okay, so let me look up the notebook. Okay, so the notebook, what was uh, What was my guess? You said 80. Okay, so because I thought that was a pretty good movie, and I'm looking now, and wow, I was way off. That is a 53. That's why I looked wow, at the numbers really? twice. I would have thought that was like a, a movie that was just a sucker for critics. It like, makes that sense. Only 50% of the population plus three more liked it. So, <laughs> so all the women and 3% men. And three gay guys. <laughs> Not, well, no, <laughs> three people like us are going to... Well, they get drunk doing yeah. it. Yeah. Like, no, babe, I loved wow, it. 53. Damn that's, it. <laughs> that's way lower than I thought it would have been. But that's why I had to look at the numbers again. Wow. I'm like, are you sure? That's, because uh, that's actually you really, really fucked up. So here we go. We got 51st Dates, and I already saw the score, but what was my what was you my You picked guess? 65. Okay. So 51st Dates is a 45. But here's the thing that's interesting. That is only an eight-point difference, which is virtually nothing, between The Notebook and 51st Dates, which is meant to be cheesy and, like – you know, slapstick and whatever. So, I mean, you put all that effort in the notebook and you only score eight points higher with critics. That's not very good. Actually. Adam Sandler did pretty good then. Adam Sandler <laughs> did really good is what I'm saying. No, I think, I think, I think, I and think if we're putting on a movie right now between these four, Silver Linings Playbook, The Bodyguard, The Notebook and 50 for States, which one would you say yes to? <laughs> the two that I chose. Yeah. 50 for, well, 50 for States is what I would choose. Or The yeah. Notebook. What or are those notebook. two? Well, I guess, yeah, what the hell? I'd see The Notebook. That's yeah, good. That's not? good. Because it's always coming to the point. I still haven't seen the whole thing. What do you want? <laughs> All right. Well, to wrap right, it up, I doing? think uh, I, you I, lost. I think I lost. You know what? I think we should do better at math. But if you want me to do it real quick, forty-seven. Yeah, Wait, go ahead no. And do that math. Ooh. Was it closer than you think? It was. You won. Wow. I that had was forty-eight. A hollow you had victory forty-seven. We did not do very good. <laughs> and by the way. I feel I feel like an asshole now. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you. Hey, while we're still right. on the movies, we do have the Oscars coming up this oh, week. Let's talk Oscars. And, we'll, and just a couple quick things on the Oscars. Number one, uh, this have they decided what they're going to do as a host? Has that been decided? I think it's going to be hostless. That's like wearing pants without socks. Yeah. Or how's that work? Uh, <laughs> it's like kissing your sister. No, that's a tie. Wait. Wait. What? That's also incest. <laughs> what do you mean tie? Uh, they say like a, a tie uh, in sports is like kissing your sister. Nobody wins. That's well, that's weird. Yeah, that's what, what they say. Where'd you hear that from? Well, I was just to say. old white people do you hang out with? <laughs> that kiss their sisters. So there's of the main categories. I wanted to kind of get your feel for what you think. We want to get our predictions down on the oh, record. Yeah, we got to get this down because okay. when are the Oscars? The Oscars are next Sunday. So the next time we talk, they will have happened. Oh, shit. All right. I got to pick. Oh, you steal my pen, you prick. You son <laughs> of a bitch. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out some here for you. Okay, and I want you to tell me what your what your gut instinct is, and then what your actual pick would be. Okay, so you're keeping track. I'm going to keep track. Perfect, because I don't want to. Okay, for best director, <laughs> I'm just going to do the major categories okay. here. For best director, we have Spike Lee for Black Klansman. Okay. Powell Palawaski, don't know who that is for Cold War. Yorgos Lanamithos Roma? for the favorite. I don't know. Alfonso Cuarón for Roma, and Adam McKay for Vice. Did you see any of those movies? I saw Roma. Roma was really good. So yeah. I'm going to say that one because that's the only one I've and seen. And he's kind of the hot director. You know, he did Gravity. He yeah. did, oh, God, what was the one he just did he's last year? He's killing uh, it right Yeah, now. he's, like, so, every movie that in, he does is In fantastic. any language or no language, like Gravity. Yeah. I just say heavy breathing and not I, dying. Yeah, there you go. But that was still, I was an exciting movie. Um, I say I'm going to have to agree with you because uh, that, uh, he, yeah, he is the uh, the favorite, not to quote one of the other uh, nominees, which is called The Favorite. But uh, I've never even heard of that movie. So you I never have. It. It's oh. a, one of the. It's another woman's one because it's about like British royalty. You say and that so gowns sexistly. Like that. I will because I'm gonna have to wind up watching it. I yeah, you know. are. That's yeah. gonna be on the list next week. For I wanted to throw slash documentaries. <laughs> yeah. I threw this one on there just because I think we've watched a lot of animated and a lot of stuff like this. So I wanted oh to yeah, let's put best that one on there. And by the way, I think this is a great year for best animated. We have The Incredibles two, oh. Isle of Dogs, oh. Mirai, which I have not seen. Mm. Ralph breaks the internet. Wow. Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Oh, so Ooh. 
I've seen all of these except for that Mirai one. I haven't seen Isle and, yet. And they were all pretty good. Yeah? They were all, like, really, really good. My pick is Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse because, mm-hmm. in my opinion, that actually should have been nominated for Best Picture. I thought it was that good of a movie. And I agree with you on that one. I think that one's going to win. I think there's only one reason it's going above is because – uh, Pixar put out two this year, and that's gonna like what did they and call Incredibles, split the vote? And... Incredibles two wasn't was really good, but not as good as Incredible mm-hmm. one. Plus, yeah, like you said, split the vote. Yeah. And I think the Spider Verse was just so insanely different. I think it's just gonna edge it over. And I think they want to reward when someone does something different, right? Yeah, like something yeah. different. So next up on uh, Best Actor, you have Christian Bale in Vice, Bradley Cooper in A Star Is Born, <laughs> Willem Dafoe in Eternity's Gate. Haven't seen it. Rami Malek mm-hmm. in Bohemian Rhapsody, and Viggo Mortensen in Green Book. Now I've seen all of these movies except for Eternity's Gate. Really? Yes. Uh, Rami Malek, the movie Bohemian Rhapsody is so overrated. It was an enjoyable movie, but it is so incredibly overrated. I've seen half of it. But Rami Malek was excellent in it. Yes. But I will say that if you've watched Vice or if you've even seen the previews, Christian Bale as uh, Dick Cheney is so utterly convincing. It's one of those movies that as you're watching it, you forget that you're watching Christian Bale. Like it's that that good. Really? Yeah. You think you're watching a Dick Cheney documentary. How many t- <laughs> really? Yeah, it's he's okay. like that convincing. See, I, I've only seen I've only seen A Star Is Born, half of Bohemian Rhapsody. But the funny thing is, I'm looking at the list and I'm going, this this category is not going to matter because it's all white males. Oh, good point. I'm like, well, Remy Malik is like uh, he is he is a uh, different Turkish or something, something which is fine, but he's still technically yeah, won't Caucasian. He's, he's uh, which I was looking at it going, yeah, I don't know. I, I was going to say Bradley Cooper, but I think that we're done with the tragedy bullshit. I think, I think you're right. I think we're done with it. It's so. almost like that movie came out too long ago, and people, it's already on the downside. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Because like it strange. had its moment where it was up, and now it's on the downside. Yeah, 13 Reasons Why happened. All these other movies happened about, right. like, that's, that's tragedic stuff. So I didn't see William Defoe, so it's going to be hard for me because I haven't seen Christian Bale, William Defoe, or Viggo Mortensen's or performance. Mm-hmm. Um, but Remy Malik did get the uh, uh, Golden Globe. The Golden Globe. So I'm going to go Remy. Okay. I uh, I'm actually going to go Christian Bale only because I think yeah, it's also <laughs> going to be, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if Remy Malek won. But I think it's also because the Oscars love being political, and, and he's be, Batman. He's Batman. He's Batman. He's, I would love him to go up and do his acceptance speech, but in the Batman voice, but just out of context completely. That would be amazing. You know how many, how much more that would get online. How yeah, much it would. Let, uh, but he's going to go obviously well. get up and and be, do on some sort of political rant, and the Oscars love that kind of stuff. So I think they're going to. I mean, that's why yeah. he's going to win. Yeah, the English guy's going to get there and do a political rant about the U.S. politics. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's oh, why he's building a wall. I mean, like, you just <laughs> keep leaky, him out. I mean, just, keep Christian Bell out. Just fueling the fire, dude. For best actress, I have I, uh, Yalitza Aparicio, which is from Roma, Glenn Close from The Wife, Olivia Coleman from The Favorite, Lady Gaga from A Star is Born, and Melissa, a surprise uh, Melissa nominee, McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy for Can You Ever Forgive Me? I haven't seen it, but I saw some stills from the movie, and it doesn't look like a comedy. It looks like she's actually, it's a dramatic they role. They do, and they uh, everything I've heard is that she's excellent in really? it, and I really... I'm interested in seeing it only because I love it when a comedic actor takes that turn and tries to do dra- dr- uh, drama. I think they usually do a pretty did good job. Did you even know that movie was coming out? No. Did you know that movie was there? That means they did which a really did a- horrible job of promoting it. <laughs> no, which means that it was a low-budget film, which means she did it because she wanted to, and it wasn't right. a big push for This money. isn't her doing that grab. movie about identity theft where she, like, or farts on something one. or whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> High-time murders or happy-time right. murders or whatever, the puppets. Do you think that they want to give it to Lady Gaga, though, in the whole, you know, she... Her perform, but but then wait a minute. She's performing she, as a singer, which she is. That's mm. not much of an acting job. She's also one step closer to her egot if she gets this. Ooh, because she got the she's, she's got, definitely got she's a got a, a Grammy. Uh, Grammy. Didn't she get this? Would be her Oscar. But what did she? No, no, no. Did she get an Emmy for uh, um, what's it called? Uh, the American Horror Story. Oh, she she was in like she was in like season four, so I think she got an Emmy. So if she got that, she'd be one step closer. She just need to be in a play because this is her first real giant movie role. So who right? do you think is going to win though? Did, or McCartney. do any of those jump up as, as like? McCartney. Yeah, you think it's going to be like the underdog her. wins? And I, that's not even the underdog, really. That's just I'm going to say someone, Lady Gaga is going to win only because I don't think there's any like other strong person in this category. The, the, the Lady in Roma, I'm not going to lie, yeah, it was it was a good movie. movie. Yeah, it was, um, it was moving, but I think a lot of people that vote on this shit mm-hmm. look at it as like a uh, almost like a period piece mm. S- but it, I don't know it just seemed realer than it actually was I'm, su- I'm actually most surprised that you watched a movie that was black and white you know what I didn't want to stare at my computer or my my, <laughs> my, my phone so I'm like I'm gonna turn on a movie I gotta read see black and white can be interesting <laughs> All right, finally, we're at the big there category. Colors. Yeah. Beige is a color. <laughs> Gray is a color. 
Uh, all right, we get to the big award of the night. This usually happens five and a half hours after the broadcast starts. Thank God there's no host. Yeah. Uh, best movie. Now, I really have a lot of issues with this category this year, but let's get into the nominees. We have Black Panther, okay. Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Green Book, Roma, Star is Born, and Vice. Now, I will tell you right off the bat, Bohemian Rhapsody is such a flawed movie. It is... Not even good as far as biopics go. It's fun. The music is good. And it's it, a fun movie. But it won the Golden Globe, won the right? the Golden Globe. And I do not get it. It is horribly written. It is a story that does not get into any of the deeper parts of that character or what happened. It is the most skim the surface, commercially that's, pleasing. That's how they were. That's how they were. The only way they got their the rights. blessing, right? Correct. Because they didn't want to get into it deep. They wanted it to be more about the music. Yeah. I, yeah, that's a good. Could have ruined it. Didn't ruin it. Who knows? No, I, no I'm not, I'm not saying it was money. a bad movie. I'm saying, does it deserve to be nominated for Best Picture? No, it, it was an enjoyable... Black Panther is similar to me where, yeah, it was good. Hell, I liked Black Panther. It was good. I really enjoyed Black yeah. Panther. Does it... Is it nominated... Think about it. Of all no, the that was awesome it. superhero movies that have ever come out... No, this was this totally... Is the this one that this gets was nominated. the one that went over because of the whole uh, environment right now we're living in. Yeah. So, I Same mean, thing with Black like, Handsman, you could probably say... I haven't seen that one, but I heard it's really fucking I, good. Yeah, I heard it was really good, too. <laughs> now, the movie The Favorite, it's a period piece. Uh, Oscar voters love women in, like, Victorian dresses and men in, like, Georgian wigs saying, Ah, oh, thou shalt not do that! And stuff like that. They, Thou they love, shall not pass is my they, favorite. They love that kind of stuff. And that one you, is always a dark horse. Green Book was another one just like Bohemian Rhapsody. That, that was movie. That really was fun. Mahershala Ali and uh, Vigo, right? Yes. Yeah, see, I think that one might win. And it was it was very enjoyable. Was it also a great movie? No, but very enjoyable. Totally worth watching. Uh, Roma, I think, definitely has some traction. And Netflix is apparently putting a gazillion dollars behind trying to win an award. Are they? So they're putting like a ton That's of money. They did a limited release on that to be in that category. Yeah. And then A Star is Born and Vice. I think the out the uh, you know, I think Black Klansman and The Favorite are probably like and Black Panther are probably like distant. Like they don't really have a chance. They're there. They're there. They're there. They're, they're, there. they're so getting. I think the nod. this is between A Star is Born, Roma, Green Book, and maybe. S- Maybe the uh, Vice, because Vice was pretty critically acclaimed. And I haven't seen Vice, so I can't speak to that one, which kind of sucks. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and say that Roma's going to win this one. Okay. And I definitely think that that's a, an interesting one to give, because then you got Alfonso Cuaron winning Best Director, according to us. Yeah. Huh. Winning Best Picture. And then, like, didn't he win it the last time he was up, too? Like, he's kind of on this role where everything he makes is solid gold. So. Yeah, and you're probably right, but I'm going to go against you just for the mm. fact just for the fact that I don't think... That best picture is going to be given to Netflix just yet. Oh, because it's Netflix. Do you yeah. think there's going to be a little bit of a uh, I, industry blowback? I think it's going to be like, you know what? You'll get there, but next year. Yeah. Because they probably didn't know, market this much, and they just re- like limited release it, and they were like, screw you, I can get in there too. So I think the Green Book's going to win, and I think because Vigo is a great actor, and Mahershala Ali is just was Murder really, really good. And and he's, yeah. doing, he's doing the true detective So many now. good things in a row, too. Yeah, yeah. so I, I think those two together, with Vigo's experience and Mahershala's uh, experience and their dynamics, I think I, th- I haven't seen it, but I've yeah. wanted to see it. And it is. It's actually really enjoyable. So uh, you wrote that down, right? I did write that okay. down. All right, uh, that is it for the movies. We'll check back next week, and we'll see how good we did, and we'll see who won. It's kind of exciting. We're not going to win much. We're not going to win Do, anything. Are we putting money on this? No, A uh, $1,000 each. No. How about next uh, next time we let's next week you record who buys dinner? Damn it! Why? Because okay. I'm gonna lose. <laughs> <laughs> really? You think so? I think so. I gave you Roma. You did. Um, I'm gonna say uh, let's just on best movie only. Look at him. He's like he's like I just I just I'll buy you a beer. I'll buy you a beer. There it is. <laughs> Done. All right. Let's move on to a quick SMRT. I am too smart. I am too smart. SMRT. I mean SMART. All right. Um, today's SMRT for you. Uh, this right, is what this one oddly enough is not from Florida. We were on a definite Florida hot streak there for a second. This one is about a teacher. It's a story about a teacher. Now teachers can do a lot of dumb things. This one in particular, okay. quite dumb. Okay. Because this teacher thought it was a good idea to show her class a movie in class. What movie? It's a Shrek. Based movie. Was it from porn.com? <laughs> it might have been because <laughs> this teacher showed her class Shrek pornography. Shrek porn. Sure wasn't sh- sure wasn't wrecked. Oh, <laughs> wreck it, Ralph. Re- uh, <laughs> it says uh, a chemistry teacher who showed shocking videos of the cartoon it's character chemistry, Shrek. It's chemicals being yeah, combined. The exchange showed mm. Shrek raping young children Ooh, to her shit. class has been fired. <laughs> right. Oh my god. 
Oh my God! They made Claire fifty Thompson. first dates into a cartoon oh with Shrek. <laughs> Claire Thompson used her school computer to project the pornographic clips onto her classroom wall. The oh inappropriate. Vi- wait, wait, wait. She also showed. This is a side note, by the way. <laughs> she also showed inappropriate videos on German and Russian torture techniques. Those are people who know how to torture. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I put them in a room and turn on the gas. Pupils were asked to watch the videos at the end of class oh and God. laughed along. She laughed along with them as she put it. Wait, what grade was this again? This is high school. No, no, excuse me. I thought it was elementary She used school. to teach high school. This is now an elementary school. It does not say what grade. But this teacher, like, by the way, Shrek porn is not something that you would find it's easily. Yeah. It's It's <laughs> kindergartners. She's all, I'm just shaping those little minds. Nine. <laughs> but this is not something you find easily, meaning she had to, like, find this. This had to be searched out. This had to be saved on her laptop. This but is it not was like, like, oh, let me just go to ShrekPorn.com. I know, right? Well, it's probably by bought way, by that one about, guy. Talk about one we should buy, right? 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 There's a, let's get into the business. Well, apparently Shrek goes around and rapes little kids, yeah. which is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> just really <laughs> bad. What the? Okay, so, okay, I get it. Porn. Got it. Porn.com. Got right. there. Shrek. Cartoon. Yeah. There are some people that like that. Ooh, They'll but, see that. But even then, you're now talking but, like a dozen yeah, people in the United States, you're maybe. Like, yeah, well. <laughs> like maybe. Well, more in the Midwest. So. <laughs> <laughs> but then you had to like. Throw in that last one. Rape kids. Oh, God. Yeah. Don't get. You don't get. <laughs> Trick. You crazy. <laughs> Pretty good. That's pretty good. Thank you. Uh, that was uh, our impressions oh. for the day. Anyways, that is my SMRT for the week. That oh, teacher shit. wins that award because that is, oh my God. I really, really hope you do not I get wish, employed for a very long time. I wish I would have known that story before. There have been a lot more jokes. Oh my gosh. All righty. Let's uh, wind up with our list, shall we? I wonder, wonder who, who, who wrote the book out loud. All right. So this is the part of the show where we add to this list. Now, this list is a list of. Fine young cannibals. Ah, great band. She drives me crazy. <laughs> yeah, that um, <laughs> that we decide that we would like to try to have a relationship with, and by a relationship we mean like a hit it and quit it kind of thing. Because like, oh look, I'm married. I have not heard someone say hit it and quit it in like a decade. <laughs> I'm trying to re-explain this. Can you please give me a moment? So, so if I was to run into one of the people on my list, and they were like, "Sure, let's go have it," you know, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's. What do they call it? Let's slap skins. Let's knock boots. Uh, knock boots. Knock boots. <laughs> let's go knock some boots. I get the pass for my wife because one, it's consensual, and two, she was on my list. And by she, we're very open here. Paul Rudd mm, probably making an appearance pretty soon on mine. You think so? <laughs> I think he might. <laughs> from clueless, clueless days he's, he's to now. He's very charming. He went, he he's went, amazingly charming. He went from annoying women to Ant-Man? Come on. Yeah. Anyway, so this week, uh, basically, I'm going to add on my list is uh, Amy Adams. Oh, because Hall, Hall of Famer. I think she's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, be, well, for a couple of reasons. She would One, make my permanent top ten. Like she's awesome. to lock she's in a top really 10. good. Yeah. So I really like her. Um, and amazingly talented too. Like I, it's one of those where she's gorgeous, but she's also like, wow, you're really good. As yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. It would, she was also Hawaiian in a movie, right? Right? Or was that the other one? Is Emma Stone? Emma Stone. Oh God, I was close. Anyway, Amy Adams. I like her. She's on my list. She's That's on it. your list. Yeah. That's it. Took me longer to explain what the list was before. Um, I'm since I. Got oh, she's to also state, nominated, isn't she? She. I do not know if she is, but I went with. Um, Oh, look. Uh, I went with a theme. Oh, yeah. I, I've been she going with a theme as well. So my theme uh, with Oscars Vice. coming up, I pick Raquel Weiss. By the way, is it Raquel or Rachel? I don't Rachel. you hate it when someone's name could She's go from either from way. The mummy. Yeah. She's from the original Mummy. And with, she was in... What's his face from... <laughs> Brendan Fraser? Yeah. Um, but she was in the, she's in the movie The Favorite, which is nominated. She's also nominated herself. And I'm thinking of Rachel, Raquel Weiss from Rachel. the movie Enemy at the Gates. Do you remember that with Jude Law... He's the uh, Soviet sniper, and she's I like... I vaguely do. The yeah, cover of the she was DVD so was like a dark blue the, with a light blue. And yeah. dark, yeah. She was like extremely sexy in that movie, and I'm thinking of her in that period piece. No, she's a very attractive yeah. woman. But I, lo- I loved her in the moment when I was introduced to her in The Mummy with Brenda Fraser. She was like... She was fun, <laughs> in that, yeah, yeah. She was but fun you, in that one. But you are right. She's dumb, nominated for Best Actress? 
Is he the best actress or best supporting? But supporting, but because also is Amy favorite. Adams. Amy Adams is right. for Vice. She's best for Vice. So there we go. We picked, <laughs> two, we picked two people on the same theme. Not planned. Not planned at all. Uh, okay, everybody, that wraps it up for this week. Uh, next week, we'll do an Oscars recap. We'll maybe talk a little sports since baseball swing uh, is in full swing. Oh, Get by it. the way, let me ask you that one. <laughs> it yeah, is in full, full swing. swing. Hey, you, the pitchers and catchers went last week. They did. Yeah. Did you even realize that this week was uh, last week was the uh, NBA All-Star game? No, because all I care about was I watched the slam dunk highlights, and that was about the extent of what I was interested in. Okay, I didn't even know it existed. Yeah. I didn't even know it happened until <laughs> today. And one of my sports podcasts was like, it was just a slam dunk contest, is from what I heard. Yeah, that's okay. pretty much all anyway, those things are. Right. So we won't talk about that next Oh, uh, in sports news, uh, Manny Machado signed today with the San Diego Padres. Anyways, that's all I got. From the Dodgers. Uh, he was on the Dodgers this last year, and he mm. signed with a rival team in the same division. That's mm. not going to win you many friends. And we just stole their football team, dude. Yeah. So mm. screw those guys. Be screwed. Anyway, San Diego right. is a pretty awesome place to live. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we will join you next week. Uh, until then, everyone be safe out there. Uh, you can follow me at Sinatra's Rat Pack on Twitter. Uh, Chris underscore Donovan here on Twitter. All right, and Chris. go to we should be better at this dot com if you have not yet. Oh yes, and rate and review, subscribe, please. Subscribe, rate, review, and that's it. All right, Chris, go be safe out there on the road, and we will talk to you next week. Catch you later. Bye. Pass and beyond to all those who weren't with us too long. Life's the most precious thing that you can lose. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire. Huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchases, full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.